All right, guys, this is my first multi-model voice chatbot. And uh, as you can see, we have uh, our choices here from the models and default is GPT-4.0. And uh, this is just a prototype. So let's ask a question. Who is Joe Biden? All right, recorded it. Answer. Now. The guy currently living in the White House, who occasionally stumbles over his words, but always finds his way back to the point. All right, so here I gave the uh, model a little bit of funny personality. So let's try one more. Who is Donald Trump? Okay, transcribing. And... Donald Trump is that guy with the hair who was a reality TV star and somehow became the 45th president of the United States. All right, so you get the point. So here, um, this has a funny personality, but um, uh, the other guys, I kind of kept it serious, but uh, give, uh, told them to let us know what their models are, what they're built on, okay? So I'm just going to ask simple questions like, Hi, how are you? And this is Cloud Sonnet. I'm Rika, an AI assistant created by Anthropic using their Claude Sinet 3.5 large language model. And I'm doing well. How can I help you today? All right. So as you can see here, uh, as soon as we change it to a Claude Sonnet, our response time got a little bit larger, right? So that kind of shows us how uh, the speed varies. The response speed varies from model to model. GPT-4 used to be, you know, much faster. Now let's choose a Llama 3.1. Now remember, this is coming from the Grok service, which is a very fast one. So this is also prompt engineered to say what kind of model this is on. So I'm just going to ask it. Hi, who are you? All right, transcribing going on. Oh, look how fast that is. I'm Rika, a helpful assistant powered by Llama 3.170B, a large language model developed and trained by Meta AI. Perfect. All right. So last but not least, let's go with Gemini. What's up, dude? Right. I'm getting the answer. Hi, dude. I'm Rika, a large language model named Gemini Pro 1.5 created by Google AI. Perfect. All right, so now we see the capabilities of this chatbot. Of course, this is just a prototype. So let's go to a diagram to see what's going on behind the scenes. All right, so this is what's happening to our multi-model voice chatbot prototype behind the scenes. User speaks to the mic, and from there we send that to our voice recorder module. And then we report the voice and create an AVI file, which is an audio file, and then hand that over to our Whisper One speech to text model by OpenAI. And this guy then transcribes the audio and turns it into text. As we saw right here, my question was in audio and we turned it into a text. Okay, and once we have our text question, we just hand that over to our LLM response generator. And uh, this generator then gives us a choice of multi-models as we saw here. Right here in the sidebar, we get to choose our model. And depending on those choices, uh, this LLM response generator sends the request, the text question to either Gemini, OpenAI Claude, or Llama 3.1 via Grok. And depending on these LLM's response, we get a text back and this text we eventually hand over to our text to speech model which is tts1 by openai and this is the one converts that llm response into a nice mp3 file and this is where we also get to choose male or female voice etc and then this file then gets handed over to our streamlit based audio player and that's the one plays the audio thus we hear the LLM response in audio. So that's pretty much it. And understand that this is just a prototype. So that's why the response time might be 
pretty high i mean that's my that might be a, an issue right now but remember once we take this structure and turn this into a production quality app we're going to have all these modules available but we're going to be using let's say uh, Next.js for front, front end and uh, fast API and Python based back end, uh, which will be sitting on a much stronger server, which will speed up some. And then we're going to use uh, parallel processing during these conversions. And at the same time, we're going to take advantage of this TTS one when it does audio streaming, right? So a lot can be done in a production level application, which we will eventually do. But right now, this prototype gives us all the necessary ingredients to build a really great voice chat app. That said, let's go to the backend code to see what's up. All right, so we are back at the code. So uh, this is pretty much what we have, and this is our uh, requirements right here all the libraries I had to install and then uh, this is where the application begins the app.py and uh, this is where all we get all the modules pulling them in into this app.py according to necessity and this is this folder is the audio folder this is where we are saving our question and answer files the audio files and before I show you the app.py, I just wanted to show you these two files. These are just development related files I use to uh, test out stuff. For example, device check. When I implemented the sound device library, I use this to see what devices are available. Are we actually talking to the devices uh, in, in our system? And then this audio test, test file I use to create just a sample audio file. I mean, I had to play around with these numbers. I mean, at one point, nothing was working, but uh, by changing around these numbers around, I finally found uh, the right settings where I was recording the voice correctly. So that said, let's go look at app.py. All right, so since this is a Streamlit program, so we uh, bring in Streamlit as ST at the top, and then here are the modules I'm bringing in from this util, utils folder. At this time, I'm gonna go over this whole file quickly, and then we're gonna tackle these modules one by one. So right here, we see the necessary variables for audio recording. Here's our title and the sidebar with our uh, modules, our model choices, as you see right here. And then comes the LLM response choice method, which is which is basically going to determine which model we're going to call, which LLM model we're going to call for response. And right here we have some placeholder messaging variables, and these are the ones used to show our progress live on the screen. And right here is our main uh, ask question button. Once that is pressed we just launch our, our audio recorder module. And once the audio is recorded, we hand it over to this audio transcriber module, which uses Whisper, as we saw here. As we saw here, from there, we just uh, take the text, take the generated text and hand it over to our LLM response generator, as we saw here. And once we get our response back, we just hand it over to our text-to-speech module, as shown here and this guy converts that text into this mp3 file as we see here answer.mp3 then we take that mp3 and hand over to our streamlit audio player set autoplay to true thus as soon as uh, that file is ready streamlit just plays it right out and that's how we can hear what the llm is saying all that being said now let's go tackle the mo one modules at a time. Let's start right here, the audio recorder module. All right, so this is our audio recorder module. We are just getting SD uh, from the sound device library and SF from sound file library. And uh, in here, we have all these arguments, file path duration, uh, file sample rate, device index. These are coming from right here. So with this info, 
Then we move forward and uh, we invoke this SD dot recording function, take our uh, generated audio data into this variable, and then we use SF dot write and the file path and this audio data to generate our WAV file, which is this guy, question.wav, and that's pretty much it for our audio recorder. Next, we will look at our audio transcriber module. All right, so this is our uh, whisper based transcriber module. Right here, we're bringing in OpenAI, and uh, here we are setting the environment variable OpenAI API key, which we have in our .env file, and we create an OpenAI client. And then this is our main function, transcribe audio, which takes file path as an argument. With that, we just uh, invoke this client.audio.transcription.create method to take that audio file and convert that into a text transcription. Now, here's something to uh, notice here. Since I'm sitting here in Malaysia, for some reason, whatever I was saying, Whisper was taking it and converting into Malaysian language, which I don't even understand. Anyway, so for that reason, this is a very important argument for me. So I had to pretty much force it to keep the transcription into English. So this is something very weird that I experienced. That being said, that's pretty much it about the transcription module. So let's move on to the LLM response generator. All right, so here we have our LLM response generator module um, using Langchain here. So these are all the uh, necessary libraries I brought in. And here you can see only three uh, API keys shown. The reason being uh, the OpenAI one I, I already used uh, during the uh, Whisper module, so I didn't have to repeat it. And uh, with that, we just have the base function using uh, Langchain. This is for the OpenAI one um, using the chat prompt template. And this is my uh, system message. And this is where I gave it a, uh, you know, like a sense of humor and uh, told it to uh, keep its answers to one line. And then we just uh, generated our model using chat OpenAI. And uh, we used GPT-4.0 model. And then this is the basic LCEL, which is Langchain Expression Language. We just created the chain with prompt pipe model. And then we took the chain and invoked it with the transcribed text and then returned the response.content. And all these other ones are pretty much exactly the same. Only difference is that um, the system message is different. Here, I took the sense of humor out and uh, told them to mention their model name and what which company made them. The rest is pretty much the same. And here, with the Claude one, the main difference here is the uh, instead of chat open AI, we used I used uh, chat anthropic model and called in Claude 3.5 Sonnet. The rest is exactly the same. And here is the Grok one. This has the exact same uh, system prompt. Only difference is Llama 3.1, 70B. And the main function is chat Grok from Langchain. And here we use Llama 3.1, 70B Versata. The rest is exactly the same. And last but not least, the Gemini model, exact same system prompt. And then, and this is the difference, chat Google Generative AI from Langchain and Gemini 1.5 Pro model called in, everything else is just the same. And this is all there is to know about our LLM response generator. Now next, let's go over the last module, which converts text to speech. This is our text to speech module, get TTS response this guy and, he, and this is a simple one we just uh, bring in client from OpenAI, and this is our main function generate speech takes two arguments the text input we just got from our llm response generator and the output path of the file and here we are invoking client.audio.speech.create method and using tts1 model by OpenAI. 
I'm choosing alloy as my voice type. There's a whole bunch of others to choose from. And then sending the input text as input. And here it is giving us a streaming audio response. And this is what I mentioned when I was uh, going over the diagram and said that this is something we can take advantage of during our making of a real production application, which means we can start playing the audio as soon as it is available which will help us with this reducing the response time a lot. And with that, I conclude this video. Thanks for watching.